Hi, my name is Dennis and in this video I want to talk about Audio Gridder and Vienna Ensemble Pro and why I'm using Audio Gridder in my current templates in Cubase. I will also show you how I set up Audio Gridder within my workflow. Vienna Ensemble Pro is an industry standard when it comes to offloading instruments on multiple servers in your setup. Vienna Ensemble Pro is a nice software because it's very stable and you can load a lot of instruments within different instances. You can, for example, switch between different projects very fast because the instruments, they stay loaded within the instances. I do not like working with Vienna Ensemble Pro because in Cubase you always need to create a rack which contains an audio file and a media file so the audio and the MIDI are always separated. Audio Gridder is different. While it also uses the concept of including a multiple servers in your system, Audio Gridder makes use of a track instead of a rack. The user experience with Audio Gridder is very comparable with loading a VST instrument on your DAW computer. The disadvantage, however, with Audio Gridder is that the loading time is very long when you are switching between different projects on a day. Audio Gridder is a nice software for people who don't need to switch between different projects on a day and also for people who prefer to work with an instrument track in their Cubase sessions rather than to work with a rack. First of all, uh, what I have done already is I have installed the plugin on my main computer, which is a Mac Studio. And I also have installed the server version of the plugin on my server computer, which is a Windows computer. I also have ensured that there is an Ethernet connection between my main computer and my second computer. Um, you can follow on the internet by going to audiogridder.com easily how to set up audio gridder for your situation. I will not dive deeper into this uh, in this video. Let's start. I have Cubase here and the first thing you are doing is you add an instrument track. You select in your instruments under E47 network the audio gridder instrument and then you got this small window. You click on the plus and then you <laughs> select in this case, BBC Symphony Orchestra plugin. And there it is. So you see the, the graphic user interface, strings, violin one are loaded, and it's working. You can also change the articulations uh, in the GUI. All controllers are working, even the keyboard in the plugin is working. Um, so what is now happening is that this plugin, it seems like that the plugin is loaded on your DAW computer, but it isn't. This plugin is now opened on your server computer and it's streaming the graphic user interface to your main computer. And I can show you this a bit because we are now here on a Mac system, but by reducing the size of the GUI a bit, as you can see, you see the background is a, is a Windows computer. So, um, yeah, we're actually now here on a, on a Windows machine uh, by working with BBC Orchestra. And uh, what you also can do is, of course, adding a second instrument to it. So a second instance of Audio Gridder and adding another BBC Orchestra instance to your project. And there it is. So I will select here, for example, Violin 2. Now we have on the left side the violin 2 and on the right side violins 1. So this is my template including Audio Gridder. The BBC Orchestra libraries they are all loaded from my server computer while the Halion instruments and the contact libraries are loaded from my main computer. So I made here a combination between loading it from a main computer and loading it from the server computer. And the reason is that the heavy processing I figured out in my template came from the BBC Spitfire library and not that much from the contact and the Halen libraries. By looking here, I have the, the winds, for example. Um, I can open it here and I have here the, the, the piccolo flute. 
and you also can hear it. The flute. And you see it's very it works very smooth. So there's no latency at all. I can switch between the different instruments very fast. And here we have trumpets, um, strings. This template works super fast and super smooth. And by looking at the uh, monitor activity, you see that Cubase has now around 45 gigabytes of RAM. So the whole memory, which is used, is around 55 gigabytes of RAM out of 128 gigabytes of RAM. And on my Windows machine, I think around 60 gigabytes of RAM loaded out of 128 gigabytes of RAM. So in total, I have access to 256 gigabytes of RAM and I split the workload on both machines. I have three tips for you when working with Audio Gridder. Tip one is make sure that the connection is via Ethernet. When your both machines also support the Wi-Fi connection, there is a big chance that you have the option between choosing the Wi-Fi connection or the Ethernet connection. And this is also the situation here. You can see that I can select between the, the desktop and then the name of my computer and the IP number here. Make really sure that you know that you are selecting the connection based on Ethernet and not based on Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi will create a lot of glitches. We, we can test it here actually. So I can now switch to the, the Wi-Fi connection. Yes, so now it's selecting the, the Wi-Fi connection and I also don't hear anything <laughs> anymore. Yeah, so you see it's not, wor it's not working anymore. Um, it's glitchy what I also can see. There's no audio coming out. Um, so the Wi-Fi connection is not working. Really make sure that your server is connected to the correct one. And in my case is this IP number. Oh, and now it's working again. Tip two, um, make sure that you buy an HDMI dummy for your server computer when you are not connecting your server computer to a second monitor. In my case, I only have one monitor, which is this, this widescreen monitor uh, with only one HDMI connection to it. So my server computer has no connection to this monitor. But the problem is when there is no HDMI connection to your graphic card, the mirroring of the, the, the casting of your graphic user interface is not working. So you can fool your machine by buying an HDMI dummy and then your computer thinks it's connected to a monitor, to an external monitor, and then the uh, graphic user interface on your main computer is working then. Tip three is make sure that you start with one vendor or one plugin. In this case, I started with Spitfire Audio to ensure that it's, that it's working and that you test it. Because when there are some problems by ensuring the connection um, and you have multiple vendors and plugins loaded on your server, it can be very difficult to find the problem. So make sure that you limit the options of problems when you're starting with audio reader. Really.